guys today i want to talk about simple things that we should you know take in in account when we talk about classical history for example if we talk about napoleon intrusion into russia in 1812 we have to keep in mind that the only road mostly only road that he used was like certain width and uh, there's no way so much troops as what they say in official history could pass through the only road for such distance and maintain the needed supply rate for all the horses all the people and so on and uh, the same thing with mongol uh, capturing russia and all this territory for 300 years there's no simple explanation for how they actually intruded all that far from mongolia how much uh, people they actually had in the army and how much horses and who was feeding all these you know human resources uh during all this time and uh and so on so many many contradictions appear when you start calculating the actual rate of of uh, food and supplies that they should receive on that horse uh, army horse hordes <laughs> of a bunch of people like 300,000 and so on I mean this is ridiculous when you start doing this calculation but anyways let's do something more more uh, I would say questionable like mm, these both examples that I just mentioned are not so popular but for example the uh, situation with uh, Giza complex construction, the, those so-called pyramids of Giza um, and how they were constructed, how many people were actually involved, involved in the construction. Uh, as they say, around uh, 100,000 people were doing it for 20 years and they had shifts, certain shifts like four times a year they were switching, so three months each shift. So let's say it was 25,000 people and they say around 4,000 were actually constructing working with blocks and all this stuff uh, around uh, 1,500 people were actually pushing those blocks I don't know what carrying those blocks each this constant maintain maintenance of this supply and uh, around some some sort of people were working at the ships some were working at the quarries and getting those blocks from the quarry lifting them up and so on and so all these 25,000 people were related to one construction all these Giza complex at the same time and of course they had to have some type of a village or a little town of those construction workers if they were nearby the pyramids and they found this small area of a possible uh, location of those construction workers and uh, let's say it's okay to place like 10 to 15,000 people at the same time, uh, you know, resting at that place. But they say these were not slaves because, you know, as many alternative, uh, alternative uh, research uh, missions were going to pyramid and everybody was finding out that that wasn't supposed to be slaves because sometimes the work is so intense and qualified that there's no way those slaves could do that. So they assumed they were specialists, 25,000 specialists that were hired actually and they say even families could be living in them so it was a continuous shift to shift work and when people were receiving their payment not beaten like like uh less like like slave workers would be beaten and totally devastated and uh skinny slaves couldn't be lifting all those big blocks so so they shift to mercenary mercenary or hired specialist i would say well anyways um uh, let's be okay with this um hired theory it sounds a lot more plausible than the slave one but anyway how could you feed all these people at the same time how many cooks you supposed to be have let's say they were slave cooks or whatever but those cooks supposed to be cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking three t to feed all these people three times a day and give them at least like let's say 300 grams 
of meat per day because they say they were giving them chicken they were giving them some you know small uh animals like sheep and uh, maybe i don't know somebody was eating who, who was a high rank they were eating cows and and somebody was eating pork and so on so they say like they were fed well they were eating fish they were eating vegetables so all this supply chain supposed to be working for 20 years a constant feeding of so much people just imagine how many food you're supposed to have in terms of feeding them well because if they are a specialist they can easily quit and leave your object without you know certain job rate of, of a certain part of a job so all this job would be halted Так, на песчаный карьер. So you don't have to have those specialists leave. You're supposed to feed them well. They're supposed to be happy. And they say, yeah, they were eating good. They were eating good. But how much food you're supposed to give to those people if they were eating good? That's enormous amount of food for such large number of people. They're supposed to be eating at least 6,000 kilograms of meat per day. Of different type of meat. I'm not saying it's only cows, but just, you know, just imagine how much food production. They're supposed to be butchers there. They're supposed to be uh, warehouses. Just imagine, this is hot Egypt. You just cannot leave those animals for an hour or 30 minutes to go wash your hands in the Nile. You're supposed to do something with those, you know. You're supposed to skin them. You're supposed to take them. You're supposed to keep them somewhere because you can't just take all this meat and you know save it for a month or three months there's no freezes there's nothing there just imagine official science is telling us that those people were feed well fed well you know so this doesn't work how much how much water they supposed to be get, getting each day like two liters per person let's say a day without washing his hands or without you know just for drinking Oh, let's say they were camels. They weren't drinking for months. But no, they're saying they were ordinary people who's supposed to be drinking. So let's say three, four liters per day for one person, including his family. So let's say 10 liters per one worker plus his family per day just to wash his hands. And that's it. Not washing at all. But they say they were just, you know, hired personnel. So they're supposed to be washing somewhere. So at least some rate of what that water should be counted too. So let's say it's it's 20 liters per day per family for one worker. And let's say even though that's that's only 10,000 people at that camp near Giza Combs, 10,000 people with 20 liters per day. Just imagine how many water they're supposed to be storing each day what is the supply chain of that water if they were taking it from the nile they're supposed to be filtering it somewhere i don't know because drinkable water is not equals water from the nile i doubt that they were drinking that water so they're supposed to be i don't know taking that water from somewhere from some reservoirs i don't know so just imagine how much 
how much problems is to supply these human resources just with food and water okay 25,000 people per shift supposed to be drinking at least two liters per day of pure water otherwise there'll be epidemia there cholera I don't know So, that is the hot hell of Egypt. Anyways, even if there were so many trees there back in the days and everything was green and they were just, you know, having water everywhere, you dig a couple of shovels and water comes up with the fontaine, that would be fine. But nobody's telling us this. They saying that was just like what we see right now, just the desert. They were keeping all these blocks from somewhere else shifting them to the boats and boats were downloading them somewhere in, near the Giza complex on, from the Nile and you pulled all those blocks and constructed this huge pyramid blocks on the pyramid itself and only 4,000 workers were doing that but anyways they had to cut those blocks somehow they had supposed to have copper they supposed to have copper for cooking they supposed to have co copper for maintenance they're supposed to have copper for cutting stones they're supposed to have copper as their main instrument metal because that was the copper time it just imagine how many copper they're supposed to have and they think copper is easy to create than than iron or something no copper is a lot more hard to create You know, they have copper production right now with the vacuum induction method. Just because copper does oxidize very fast. I highly doubt that the quality of the copper that they produce method is very good. So just imagine how many fake instruments they were creating with those, with those low quality production methods. So it was impossible to create all this production of blocks with, with those, you know, broken of copper because copper oxidizes really fast if you don't you know use all these methods and um, so I highly doubt that the copper was used but they say it was copper let's believe them how much copper they supposed to carry to that you know they're supposed to have blacksmith they're supposed to have metallurgy stuff all these you know stoves and how much wood is supposed to be burning each day just to get all those instruments done so they can have a continuous supply of those low quality instruments just to keep it going for 20 years because everything was breaking down breaking apart because cutting those stones with those very soft material instruments is impossible but anyways they were doing that is what they say but so many copper supposed to be quarried somewhere but they don't say where it was actually you know pulled from you're supposed to have native copper to create such amounts because how how could you cut a quarry to get to that copper actually without no copper at all so it's like what it was first chicken or the egg copper or the quarry or instruments to get that copper from that quarry and this is just you know enormous blah 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 demagogical question blah 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 rhetorical question but they don't answer that question they don't like these calculations they don't like to talk about how much copper they supposed to have and been used in those instruments and those how could they actually do the blacksmith work without no iron? 
we don't have no base to you know do this blacksmith uh, you know instrument creation actually with those hammers you're supposed to hit on something what was that something if that wasn't you know something like a steel or metal i don't know it's supposed to be hotter than the copper itself the hammer is supposed to be hotter properties than the, the copper itself otherwise it will be you know melting along with the copper it was hidden right so i don't know simon dan i don't know who else who else wikipedia guys where are you at fact checkers why don't you fact check all this stuff from the official science and put all these fact checking messages that this is partly false uh, explanation of something like creation of the giza complex right just do it that's my advice i know sneaking around and somebody's posting fact checking the host that post that are uh, written by 20 people just go to the million where a million views are at it's wikipedia and everything can be fact checked there guys do your job see you later bye